Hello all. Welcome to Applications Manager's webinar on What's New in Application Monitoring? Maximizing Operational Efficiency with Enhanced Performance Insights. Let's take a quick look at what we've got lined up for today. Today, we'll deep dive into our applications architecture covering everything from URLs to SQL. We'll also take a look at the golden metrics you need to monitor and improve the performance of your applications. Additionally, we'll also walk you through on how you can improve code quality with end-to-end -end distributed tracing and accelerate issue identification with AI. Lastly, we will share the latest enhancements in our APM Insight module, which is an application performance monitoring module, and some tips on how we can make the best out of it. First, let's take a look at the impact of application perform performance. In today's fast-paced world, poor application performance directly translates to frustrated users who demand seamless experiences. But why is there such a big emphasis on application performance? Now, just think about this as a sliding scale, where faster and quicker websites or applications reap the most benefits. Website speed hugely impacts your application performance. According to a stat by Website Builder Expert, 64% of the dissatisfied customers simply opt to purchase from another site and stop visiting the slow loading site again. Now, slow website speed not only impacts customer loyalty, it can also have a staggering impact on your revenue. In fact, according to a research by Uptime Institute, a majority of the businesses face a loss of $100,000 to $1 million due to the outages, and this includes direct opportunity as well as reputational costs. Additionally, a survey by SuperOffice states that customers prefer to do businesses with organizations that are more proactive than reactive in their approach towards issue resolution. So why exactly has managing these applications become so hard in the first place? Now, this is because of the complexity induced by the transition from monolithic to microservices architecture. Now, while microservices bring advantages like scalability and agility, that decentralized nature introduces a multitude of interconnected components that must be meticulously tracked. Monitoring individual services and their interactions across a dynamic and elastic environment demands sophisticated tools that can capture granular performance data. Now, ensuring seamless communication between services, diagnosing uh, latency bottlenecks, and maintaining the overall system responsiveness in the face of frequent uh, updates have all become extremely complex tasks. So how exactly can application performance monitoring help in such a scenario? Let us take a short example of how this can help. Let's say you have a log stash. Now most requests and responses will have timestamp on them, right? In this specific example, the response time is 40 seconds slow, which is actually a pretty bad experience. So you'll want to figure out what's going on, right? This is exactly where APM becomes very helpful. With the help of application performance monitoring, you'll be able to see the transactions and understand which part of it is consumed 40 seconds and optimize the scene for better performance. Now let's see how Applications Manager's Application Performance Monitoring Module, which is APM Insight, can help you boost the efficiency of your applications. With that being said, let's get started with the first topic for the day, which is gaining a holistic view of your application performance from URL to SQL. So today, we're going to be taking a real-time example of an e-commerce company. So we're changing the name of the company to SmartShow for privacy purposes. Now, let's consider SmartShow to be a popular e-commerce platform that consists of a microservices architecture. Now, troubleshooting is always taxing, right? But microservices can make it even more cumbersome 
as developers have to correlate logs, metrics, and all the other diagnostic information from multiple lines of services. The higher the number of services in the system, the more complex the diagnosis is. Now to understand this better, let's take a look at the application flow when a user engages with SmartStore. The first and foremost what we have is the user interaction. At the outset, this signifies the user's engagement with the website, initiating actions and interactions. The user interacts with the front-end interface where they navigate and perform actions. Now, the next thing that we have is the front-end itself. Now, functioning as a user interface, the front-end serves to the present uh, to present the visual elements as well as to manage user inputs. Now, through communication with various microservices, the front end orchestrates the execution of user requests. Now, the next thing is something you're very familiar with, right? Adding your items to the cart. Now, this stage captures the user's action of adding the chosen items to the shopping cart, and this involves communication with the inventory microservices to ensure real-time validation of the item availability. Now, after this, the next step is viewing the cart and editing the cart. Now, this has the order and payment microservices, which helps during the checkout process. Now, the last thing that we have is a payment gateway. Now, representing the backend database, it's a very integral component because uh, it stores vital user data, product information, as well as order specifics. Now, multiple microservices interact with the databases for data retrieval as well as storage purposes. So, as you can see, this is one single user interaction, and this involves so many applications, and there are so many applications which are involved in the flow. So, when it, so how do you tackle this? This is exactly what SmartStore is also grappling with. Now, this particular organization is experiencing a lot of issues. First and foremost, the search and the register now button is quite slow. It is suffering from sluggishness, causing frustration among users due to delayed results. Additionally, frequent application clashes have created a disruptive environment, hindering smooth interactions and potentially leading to customer attrition. Another pressing concern is the checkout process because it's encountering frequent failures, resulting in abandoned cards as well as lost sales opportunities. Now, it's crucial for SmartStore to swiftly address these challenges as they collectively undermine user satisfaction, hamper conversions, and erode platforms' reliability. Now, to do all of these things, they need holistic insight into the transactions that are taking place. Now, how do they discover these affected transactions? Now, as you might be aware, whenever a transaction starts, whether machine to machine or human to machine, a unique identifier is given. And as it travels through the technology stack, you can track it through all the hoops and bounds. You'll also be able to measure how long the hoops take, how they behave, including error rates, transaction rates, etc. Now, with traditional approaches, when you get up in the morning, you see two errors and two problems. And each and every, every team will try to tackle their issues, be it the database team or the application team or the network team. Now, as soon as you bring these end-to-end -end transaction phases into the picture, you get way more context. Now, let's move on to the second image. Now, the second image represents a modern approach. Here, I have reordered the transaction according to interactions. Now we can see that all the transactions were impacted either by an error or by a problem. Now this will give you full domain isolation, which will give you further insight into where the problem came from and why, and further down to the root cause analysis. Now let's go and see how SmartStore functions. So this is the website. So I'm clicking on the particular Apple product. I want to purchase an iPad. So 
So I'm choosing the color of my choice and adding it to cart. Now let's go to the Applications Manager UI to see how this works and how the data is being captured in real time. So this is the Application Performance Monitoring, aka the APM Insight module. So here you can see the overview of the particular smart store along with the response time components, exception counts, exception split ups, traces, transactions, etc. So I'm moving to the transactions. So as you can see, the transactions that we have performed have been captured. Let me just move on to the transactions that we did in the last 30 minutes alone. So as you can see, uh, there is a transaction named product slash product details. So as you can see, these transactions have been grouped based on the average response time. And here you can see average response time of this particular transaction. And you can also see the response time broken based on the components. So you can see all the metrics here, the minimum and maximum range, the 95th percentile data, etc. You'll also be able to view the app server component split up, that is which particular component is taking up most of your time, as well as the request to report data. So with the help of this, you'll be able to understand what are all the transactions that have taken place, as well as uh, what are all the errors that have taken place. So you'll be able to see the background transactions as well as the errors. Same way, you can also view the same for the databases. You'll be able to view all the database operations that have been performed the total number of requests, the error rates, response time, as well as the average response time of each of the DB operation. So I can click on a particular operation and I'll be able to view the transaction details, database operation based on the caller, as well as the response times and throughput. So this will exactly tell you which particular transaction is consumed, how much of SQL time. So we'll be looking at this in detail uh, in the upcoming uh, slides. Now let's move on to the presentation and to the second topic of the day, which is tracking golden metrics and analyzing the performance with ease. Before going to the golden metrics, let's take a quick look at how our APM Insight module basically functions. Now, since it's an agent-based module, the first step involves deploying an agent on the application server where all the applications are running. Now, these agents are responsible for collecting performance data and sending it to application manager for analysis. Now, the agent residing in the application server will use bytecode instrumentation method to start tracking individual user transactions as they flow through application and send the data to applications manager at fixed time intervals. Now this approach basically allows detailed monitoring of transaction performance and helps us identify any bottlenecks or performance issues. It also provides code level visibility to track slow database queries and their performance by capturing real-time user interactions along with the application. Now that we understood how APM Insight functions, let's take a look at some of the common factors that usually affect application performance. The first one is the response time. Now, when the transaction is made by the user in the web application, the request is basically sent from the application layer, which then travels through the transaction and the network layer and hits the application server. And then this request is served back to the end user. Now, in case of slow connection to the web application, it will lead to network traffic and the transaction will consume more time than usual. 
Now the second factor that affects application performance is the application code. So an application may contain bugs that might affect its overall performance, right? The bugs in your code can cause exceptions that might result in transaction execution failures. Now track, uh, stack traces can be used to identify these code issues and fix the application. Now the third one is the memory. Now high usage of web applications and non-optimized applications at the code level can cause some high consumption of memory leading to out of memory as well as memory leak issues. So it's very important for you to monitor the memory. Now the fourth factor that affects application performance is the database. Now for instance, the database calls and the queries that are pertaining to any specific transaction can become highly loaded and it might even end up affecting your overall application performance. Now let's take a quick look at the golden metrics that you need to track in order to ensure that your application performance is always on point. First and foremost, we have the Abdex score. Now Abdex score quantify user satisfaction based on response times. By measuring how often response time meets or exceeds the predefined thresholds, you'll be able to assert whether the users are experiencing satisfactory inter interactions or not. Now, low Apex scores indicate the areas that need improvement, and you'll be able to prioritize how you can optimize these services for pages that have lower Apex score when compared to others. Now, the second golden metric is the response time. Now, as we all know, maintaining optimal response time for your web applications is highly crucial. Tracking response time will allow you to identify pages or services that are causing delays, and it will allow you to optimize them to ensure a smooth, smoother browser and shopping experience. Now, the next golden metric is the data throughput. Now, high data throughput ensures that the customer's orders, payments, or interactions are processed swiftly. Now, this is in case of an e-commerce website, but in case of a regular application, it helps ensure that your uh, transactions are seamless even during peak periods. Now, the next metric is the requests. Monitoring the number of requests will help you understand the volume of user interactions with the applications. By tracking the requests over a period of time, you'll be able to identify the user patterns, peak traffic periods, and potential spikes in demand. Next one is the errors. Now, tracking errors will allow you to detect as well as address issues as and when they arise. Now, by identifying error-prone areas, you'll be able to implement fixes and prevent disruptions to the user journey. Next in the last metric is the exception. Now, monitoring exceptions will provide insights into potential issues or defects in your application code. Unhandled exceptions can lead to unexpected behavior or downtime, and tracking them will help you detect and resolve these problems promptly. Now, when exceptions occur, tracking them will allow you to understand the context in which they happen, and this will aid in identifying the root cause of issues thereby helping developers to pinpoint to problematic code segments for debugging as well as improvement. Now let's switch the UI. To see how Applications Manager helps you track all the golden metrics. First and foremost, we have the Abdex score. So here uh, you have the ranges. So red indicates critical. Yellow indicates warning and clear green indicates that the uh, uh, performance is well and good. So it basically uh, gives you the severity based upon frustration, tolerating as well as satisfied. Now the next one that we have is the response time. So uh, the here this response time will give you the response time broken by components. So you'll be able to see the web as well as background components and their respective response times. So this will give you insight into which particular component is taking up the most time. 
Now the next thing that we have is a data throughput. So here you'll be able to tag the request throughput and you'll be able to drill down to a particular uh, throughput and take a look at it. Just a second. Yeah. So here uh, you'll also be able to tag the requests, exceptions, as well as the errors. So you can click on the particular request and see the total count uh, per minute. The exceptions will also give you how many exceptions are fatal and how many are in the warning stage. You can also go to the exceptions tab and view all of this in detail. So here you'll be able to click on the exception type as well as see the exception split tip based on the exception count. So here you can view the uh, split based on the top exceptions. You'll also be able to view the raw data as well as the graphical data. Here, you'll also be able to see the error transactions. Here, you'll be able to see the errors that have occurred uh, during this particular transaction. And you'll also be able to see the response time broken by components. So this is how you'll be able to track the golden metrics with Applications Manager. Let's switch to the UI presentation and go to the third topic for the day, which is improving code quality with end-to-end -end distributed tracing. So first and foremost, when it comes to application performance monitoring, it's all about the transactions. Now, typically a transaction can be a HTTP request. So when a request comes in, the APM will start a new transaction. So until the response is sent back, it will instrument the code and basically generate the spans that will give you a nice waterfall model of what the transaction is spending its time on. So now you, your request can have more than one transaction, right? Now here is an example of what we called a distributed tra tracing where a request comes in and generates multiple transactions and how APM can show you the waterfall all the way throughout these transactions. Now, this is extremely helpful in terms of seeing how the services are interacting with each other and you'll be able to visually pinpoint where exactly the problem lies. Now, let me explain this in more detail. Now, when a request is launched, such as when a user submits a form on the website, end-to-end -end distributed tracing systems begin to gather data. Now, this causes the tracing platform to generate a unique trace ID and an initial span, which is known as a parent span. A trace displays the request's complete execution path, with each span representing a single unit along the way, such as an API call or the database query. Now, a top-level child span is produced whenever the request enters the service. Now, this top-level child span might operate as a parent to numerous child spans which are nested beneath if the request is made of multiple instructions or searches within the same service. Now, each child span, as you can see here, has its own uh, uh, original trace ID as well as a unique span ID. Now, finally, all of these spans can be represented with the help of this flame graph where each parent span is the top and the child span is nested below based on the order of occurrence. Now, this will allow the teams to observe how long the request is spent on each service or a particular database because each of these span is timed and they'll be able to focus their efforts on debugging uh, things accordingly. Now, let me give you a quick example of how uh, what exactly a trace, a span, and a tag is. Now, trace basically represents an end-to-end -end request 
and it can be made of any single or multiple spans. And span basically represents the work done by a single service uh, with time intervals in associated metadata, which is basically a building blocks for a trace. And uh, tags metadata will help context contextualize a span. So basically, understanding traces as well as uh, the spans will help you uh, get better insight into performance bottlenecks. So you'll be able to understand the slowest method calls, uh, which, uh, which exact call is causing the issue, and you'll be able to pinpoint and optimize them better. So how exactly do you trace across your microservices architecture? So there are three steps to it. First and foremost, you need to visualize the flow. Now, visualizing the flow can dynamically show how the request progresses from the front end to the back end services. And this includes interaction with the databases and the external APIs. This visualization helps teams gain a clear understanding of the end to end journey. The second one is identifying dependencies. Now, the actual interactions that occur during user requests can be analyzed by automatically mapping out the dependencies between the microservices, and it can generate dependency graphs or diagrams that choose on which services rely on each other. This visual representation allows team to see the direct as well as indirect dependencies, which helps in aiding uh, the, the, the troubleshooting efforts. The third one is optimizing communication among microservices. By getting insight into the communication patterns and the latencies that are present between microservices, uh, teams will be able to identify bottlenecks or areas where communication might be causing the release. With this information, you'll be able to make informed decisions about optimizing service-to-service -service interactions, implementing asynchronous communication, or even considering your microservices for a quick refactoring. Now that we've seen how we can trace across a microservices architecture, let us take a quick look at the benefits of distributed tracing. First and foremost, distributed tracing will help reduce your mean time to detect as well as resolve to a great extent. Teams can swiftly troubleshoot the issue by analyzing the traces created by the impacted service, and you'll be able to investigate the front-end performance issues from the same tool in case you're using one like Applications Manager that helps with end-to-end -end distributed tracing. Now, the second one is understanding service connection. Now, with the help of this, you'll be able to discover the cause and effect connections between the services and optimize their performance by studying the distributed traces. Now, for example, viewing a database call span might help you uh, understand whether the database entry is affecting an uh, upstream service and causing slowness or not. Now, the third benefit is maintaining a service level agreement. Now, teams will be able to quickly determine if they're meet meeting the SLEs using distributed tracing systems, which will help collect performance data from specific services. Now, the last benefit is improving productivity as well as collaboration. Now, different teams may own services uh, that are involved in completing a given request in your microservices architecture. Now, distributed tracing will help you identify the source of an error and the team which is responsible for identifying and resolving it. Now, the question might arise, where exactly do you begin when it comes to distributed tracing? Now, the first step is going to be to establish the grounds for truth for your production environment. You need to understand what are the average demands of your system. Now, with the insights of distributed tracing, you'll be able to get the big picture of your service's day-to-day -day performance, uh, as well as it will help you understand uh, where exactly these optimizations need to occur. Now, when you have answers to these two questions, it will be very easy for you to understand uh, contextually how exactly your transactions are performing and what steps you can take in order to make your transactions better and optimize user experience to a great extent. 
Now, to provide you uh, the deep visibility into your business logic, our APM Insight module also allows you to customize the spans that you have that make up your traces as well as needs in your implementation. Now, uh, custom instrumentation will allow you to track the interactions that aren't being captured by automatic instrumentation. And this will help you add the detail of your transaction traces and help you identify key issues. So basically, as you can see here, uh, the uninstrumented black of, uh, uh, block of code which is there before and after you can see the code here. So this will help you gain 100% visibility into all your application methods and frameworks. And it will also help you customize spans that make up your traces based on your needs and implementation. Before moving on to the next topic, let's jump to the UI to see how this works. So I'm going under traces. So let me show you how I come under traces. So here I'm going to click a particular transaction. And I'm going to be clicking the request time. As you can see, this leads me to the traces tab. So this is the index page of uh, the uh, SmartSo website. As you can see in the summary, you'll be able to see the slowest method calls and this will be based on the components. Now, in case there are any external calls that are made, they'll be shown in the external calls tab. So here you'll be able to see the slowest method calls, the count as well as the duration. And you'll also be able to see the request headers. So here you'll be able to see the trace details. As you can see, you can click on this particular trace and you'll be able to see all the components and you, the components are split up based on the uh, metrics. So whether it's a process request, uh, SQL, entity framework, etc. So in case you want to highlight the metrics that are slowing down, you can uh, enable the suspected slow metrics option and it will highlight the metrics that have the most response time. The next thing that we have is the SQL statements. So this will give you insight into the uh, back, uh, background SQL statements that are going on and you'll be able to see the queries that are slowing down your application performance. And in case you're making any external calls uh, to uh, other applications, which is the purpose of distributed tracing, you'll be able to see uh, all the remote external call details here, along with the count and the execution time. So here you'll be able to uh, filter out or sort out uh, the SQL based on the external calls. And you'll also be able to see how many times this is being called and what's the approximate execution time. Now, we spoke about custom instrumentation, right? So in case you have any other traces of this particular transaction, you can view it under this tab. So you'll be able to see the average response time as well as throughput. So you'll be able to uh, like filter out the traces of this transaction based on the recent one, ones as well as the slowest ones. So you'll be able to click on to the particular slowest transaction and you'll be able to view about it in, it in detail. So this is the particular slow transaction. And as you can see, there are certain elements that are taking more time than the others. Again, you can click on suspected slow metrics and it will highlight all of them for you. Now, the next thing that we have is the errors as well as distributed. Now, I already have another application in which I have this for you. So here you can see all the uh, error traces. 
So you can click on the particular transaction. And you'll be, you'll be able to see uh, the same for errors as well as for distributed. Now, this is a particular uh, Java application. So you'll be able to see the JVM usage as well. As you can see, you can view the JVM uh, CPU usage, classes count, heap memory, non-heap memory, etc. Then I'll go to the distributed tab. So here you'll be able to view uh, all the details. And you'll also be able to see the component split up. So let's move on to the presentation. And to the next topic for the day which is accelerating issue identification with root cause analysis. The first thing that we are going to be discussing about is how you can eliminate issues when it comes to problematic codes. Now, as you might already be aware, a stack trace represents a movement in an application during the execution of a program. So when a Java application throws an unexpected exception, the stack trace gets logged with it. Now, by analyzing this particular stack trace, uh, developers will be able to pinpoint the exact line of code and the sequence of the function call, which is leading to this particular issue. So this information will help them understand the root cause of the problem, and it will also help them resolve the issue by elevating application performance. Now, Applications Manager helps you optimize your performance with the help of thread profiling. Now, thread profiling will enable you to identify and isolate bottlenecks in your code stack. Now, each of these thread profiles consists of a list of threads that were running when the applications were being profiled. Now, upon clicking a particular thread profile, you will be able to view the high CPU consuming threads along with their thread ID, CPU time, and memory allocated details. You'll also be able to see uh, the time-consuming methods, which could potentially affect application performance. And you'll also be able to see the invocation count of every method. So what exactly can you achieve with threat profiling? So basically, it will help you identify the performance bottlenecks. So you'll be able to uh, pinpoint specific threats or sections within your microservices architecture that are causing the performance bottlenecks. The second thing is that you'll be able to optimize for multi-threading. Now, you might employ multi-threading to handle multiple user requests simultaneously, right? Now, thread profiling will help reveal whether the threads are efficiently utilizing efficient, uh, available resources or they are frequently blocked, leading to suboptimal concurrency. So with the help of this insight, you'll be able to adjust the multi-threading strategies based on these uh, inputs. The third uh, benefit is uh, tuning thread profiling. Thread profiling will assist in determining the optimal size of your thread pools. And by uh, fine tuning these thread pool configurations, you'll be able to ensure that your application remains efficient in concurrency while avoiding any resource overconsumption. Now, the fourth benefit is detecting deadlocks. Now, thread profiling helps the teams identify instances where exactly your threads are deadlocked. And this will help prevent any further progress in the application because deadlocks will help uh, uh, deadlocks will uh, prevent your application from progressing further. So by detecting this with the help of your uh, thread profiling, you'll be able to ensure that your website always remains responsive as well as available to the users. Additionally, it will also help you reduce the response time. Needless to say, when you're able to like uh, identify and resolve uh, the performance bottlenecks quickly, your application response time will improve to a huge extent. And as we discussed before, it will also help you optimize your resource utilization and will help you ensure that there, that there are no memory leaks or no resources being over or underutilized. Next thing that we have is something known as app parameters. Now, app parameters is a very helpful feature which will help you monitor your important parameters in your applications. Now, with app parameters, you'll be able to monitor the size, numeric value, or frequency of a variable or an application. 
Now let's understand this with the help of a quick example. Now let's say that a simple web request invokes an API call, a database operation, as well as a cache hit request. Now this particular request can invoke multiple resources and multiple users can invoke multiple requests at once. Now in these instances, you'll be able to figure out how often the API was called as well as the number of times the database operation took place during a particular time interval. Now this will help you assess if the CPU or memory is being overloaded and how this actually affects your entire application performance within a given time interval. Now with real world applications, now this particular feature is extremely useful because you'll be able to monitor the frequency of hits to DB calls, service calls, or any user defined framework calls. You'll be able to troubleshoot the performance degradation in case if it was caused by an overload of hits. The next thing that we have is a service map. So what exactly is the service map? The service map will provide you a complete overview of your application infrastructure along with its connection to other dependent resources. With service map, you will be able to view the status of your application as well as instances and will also be able to view key metrics like response time, throughput, connection status, failed request counts, etc. Now let's go to the UI to see how all of these work. Let me go to the thread profile tab. So here I can see the thread count, the average CPU car CPU time, as well as the memory usage. So here you can click on the particular icon called initiate thread profiling, and you can give the profiling duration. So once you give start, it will start initiating thread profiling immediately. Now the next thing that we have is the JVM details. So this is basically for a Java application. So here you'll be able to view the summary along with the CPU usage, runtime memory, classes, uh, JIT time, etc. So you'll also be able to view the heap memory as well as non-heap memory uh, details. And you'll also be able to view how much memory has been consumed and uh, uh, which metric is consuming the most memory. You'll also be able to see the just-in-time compiler details, the JVM classes count, as well as the runtime memory details. Then we have the garbage collector. So this will help you uh, get insight into your garbage collection details. And you'll be able to see the time spent in collecting objects, as well as uh, the collected objects count, uh, the time spent in um, uh, collecting objects based on instance-wise split tip and so on. So this will help you get a clear view of which metric is consuming the most time during your garbage collection process. Next one is the threads. So you'll be able to get a complete insight into your threads uh, along with the metrics, whether it's a daemon threads, live, peak, or the sleeping threads. And you'll be able to see the response time based on a minimum, average, maximum, as well as a 95th percentile value. So you'll also be able to see the number of live threads, daemon, peak, as well as the sleeping threads that are actually running and the ones that are being used as well as uh, the ones that are idle. Now, the next thing that we're going to be seeing is the app parameters. So here I already have some parameters for you. So here you can see the number of uh, block threads count. So as you can see the count here, there is a total of 11 between uh, the, in, in the last last week. So here you can see uh, the uh, Java memory used and the other details. That is, you'll be able to see the frequency of hits to this particular parameter and during which day, how many times it has been hit. Next thing that we have is a service map. As you can see, it gives you a clear picture of all the resources that are present and how these components are basically interconnected. As you can see, this is our EPM uh, Insight instance, and you have a HTTP call here, which is connecting to uh, three more resources, and then a PG SQL call here, call here, which is connecting to two more resources. 
So you'll also be able to see the available, unavailable, schedule maintenance, unmanaged instances, etc. All you need to do is to drill, uh, hover over this particular service map so as to see whether the uh, 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 whether the instance is up or down. You'll also be able to see the number of failed requests, total requests, throughput data, average response time, and so on. You can also split this based on HTTP call as well as PG SQL. So this is how uh, troubleshooting works in APM Insight module. Now let's switch to the presentation and move on to the next topic for the day, which is leveraging AI to, to detect anomalies and troubleshoot quickly. Now our applications manager provides a set of capabilities which will help you automate repetitive tasks and remedy threshold breaches. Now let me provide you with an example here. Say uh, the server on which your application is running on uh, has a CPU usage which is exceeded like 92%, but your ideal CPU usage needs to be 85%. Now, what basically happens is that you will, uh, you will, uh, the alarm will be triggered, uh, you'll be alerted, and uh, you'll be you, you'll be taking the further steps in order to like optimize the resources or uh, to uh, troubleshoot this. So what our IT automation framework does is that it will help you get rid of the manual work. So you can have an automated server script or a webhook which you can configure, uh, which will be automatically applied when such a scenario takes place. So what basically happens is that our alarms engine dynamically evaluates the system events as well as the metric data that is corresponding to the particular threshold as well as alert strategies. And this will automatically execute the mapped action in case of an event violation. In this case, it's a CPU exceeding a set percentage. Also, you'll be able to get notifications via multiple channels. Apart from this, uh, we also provide something known as a threshold profile. And uh, Applications Manager basically supports three kinds of threshold profiles, uh, static, adaptive, as well as anomaly threshold profiles. So I'm going to the alarms tab. As you can see, uh, the alarms have been split based on the severity. And you'll also be able to see the alarm message, the type, the technician name, uh, the date and time, and so on. The next thing that we have are the actions. So as we discussed before, Applications Manager supports a wide range of actions. So I'm going to click Execute Program here. So this is how the IT automation that we discussed before works. So here you can give the program that you need to execute and uh, give uh, in case you need a success or a failure notification, you can also provide the same. And in case you want this uh, program to be aborted after a point in time, you can also provide the time limit. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, execute actions uh, based on business hours. You can choose to do it uh, including business hours as well as outside of it. Uh, the next action types that we have are uh, database action types, uh, window service, containers, cloud, VMs, and so on. Now, let's quickly take a look at the threshold profile. So, as we discussed, we have a threshold profile, adaptive profile, as well as anomaly profile. So, let, let, us, let me go to the adaptive profile here. So, as you can see, uh, we have two options, automatic as well as manual. Now, what the automatic option does is that it will compare your existing value to the uh, value of the best performing week or the best performing uh, data, which is based upon the historical patterns. You'll be able to like understand if there is a deviation with respect to your, uh, uh, to your data or not. So in case there is a deviation percentage, uh, you will be able to uh, uh, configure the alerts based on uh, severity, whether it's critical, warning, or clear. So basically, it will compare this with the historical data. The next thing that we have is an anomaly profile. So in anomaly profile, it will uh, it will directly compare it to the best performing week. So there, as we saw in threshold profiles, you'll be able to compare it based on the historical patterns. So in case of any deviation, 
but with respect to anomaly, you'll be able to compare it uh, with the best performing week. That is, say, for example, week one of July 2023 was your best performing week, and you want your CPU utilization to fall within that range for the next three, four months. So you'll be able to set that as a baseline and compare the metrics. Now we have two kinds of comparison method. You can either compare the last hour value directly with the baseline value, or you can also compare values based on the corresponding differences with the previous hour. Here we have uh, capacity planning and uh, forecast reporting. So capacity planning will help you understand the uh, utilization of resources in your applications. Uh, across the applications. So with this, you'll be able to ensure uh, that none of your uh, resources are overutilized or underutilized. And then we have the forecast growth trends. So this will help you uh, understand uh, the uh, growth trend as well as utilization level of a particular attribute over a period of time. Now let's see how this works in the UI. Here you can see uh, the capacity planning. You can click on the windows and the undersized servers. So you can view the data up to one year and you'll be able to see uh, the CPU memory and disk utilization and you'll also be able to configure for server diagnosis. Uh, then we also have the forecast report. So you'll be able to select a particular monitor type and you'll also be able to see the disk utilization for the uh, Tomcat server if this is what your application is running on. As you can see here, you can see the disk utilization data up till September 2023. And this will allow you to uh, plan your resources as well as understand how your attribute is, uh, can possibly grow uh, in the next few months. Now let's switch the presentation. So uh, next, what we have is our observability platform. So as we discussed today in this session, uh, Applications Manager is an application performance monitoring in an observability platform uh, that will help you monitor your metrics, logs, and traces. And we also have an inbuilt AI or ML engine that will help you with the alerting as well as automation capabilities. So with the help of this platform, you'll be able to visualize uh, or the performance of your entire application stack with the help of reports as well as dashboards. So in case you're new uh, to Applications Manager and you want to learn about it further, you can always download a 30-day free trial. Or in case you want to know how this particular product will help you uh, in your business in real time, you can also uh, sign up for a personalized demo. I'll leave the links for both in the chat panel. Now, in case you're an Applications Manager customer, uh, this section is for you. So uh, we made a lot of enhancements to our EPM Insight module in the last uh, three, four months. So I'm going to quickly brief you on the same. So we basically revamped the entire EPM Insight uh, UI. So this, as you can see, this is the difference between the old as well as the new UI. You can see the overview, transactions, traces, etc. Let me just quickly show you how it looks. So this is how the new UI looks and this is how the old UI looked. So in the new UI, we have added uh, the added filters for availability, abdex scores, throughput, fatal count, etc. So here you'll be able to see uh, the errors, average response time, throughput, uh, fetal count, etc. in the uh, first uh, page itself. And when you enter in, there is a significant difference in terms of how the UI is. So this is how the uh, previous UI looked like. And this is how the new UI looks. Same goes for transactions as well as the traces that are under them. You 
previously uh, this is how the traces looked like now you have a much more visual appeal so here you'll be able to uh, see with the help of a, uh, a flame graph how uh, these uh, traces are performing as well as the response time of each of the traces Now, aside from this, we've also made uh, some enhancements uh, to the agent upgrades. So uh, we have upgraded our PHP, Java, as well as .NET agents. Uh, let's also have a quick recap of what we discussed today. Today, uh, we discussed how we can gain end-to-end -end visibility across your application infrastructure. Uh, the KPIs you need to watch out for in order to ensure your seamless application performance. How you can uh, seamlessly troubleshoot issues and what are all the major enhancements in applications manager and how you can uh, get better insights via these enhancements. Thank you and have a nice day.